Jaisi-Krishna-Chaitanya-Dottananda-Sriya-Dvaita-Gadakhar-Sivasadi-Gaur-Bhakta-Vindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Tasma Satcha Vikurvanar Bhagavan Vira Chodita Sabda Matram Abhutas Man Nabda Shrotam to Sabda Gam Translation When egoism is in ignorance is agitated by the sex energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the subtle element sound is manifested, and from sound come the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing. I'll read it again. When egoism is in ignorance is agitated by the sex energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the subtle element sound is manifested. And from sound come the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing. Purport. <clears throat> it appears from this verse that all objects of our sense gratification are the products of egoism in ignorance. It is understood from this verse that by agitation of the element of egoism in ignorance, the first thing produced was sound, which is the subtle form of ether. <laughs> it is stated also in the Vedanta Sutra that sound is the origin of all objects of material possession, and that by sound one can dissolve this material existence. Anavritab sabdat means liberated by sound. The entire material manifestation began from sound, and sound can also end material entanglement if it has a particular potency. A particular sound capable of doing this is the vibration Hare Krishna. Our entanglement in material affairs has begun from material sound. Now we must purify that sound in spiritual understanding. There is sound in the spiritual world also. If we approach that sound, then our spiritual life begins and all other requirements for spiritual advancement can be supplied. We have to understand very clearly that sound is the beginning of the creation of all material objects for our sense gratification. Similarly, if sound is purified, our spiritual necessities are also from sound produced from sound. Here it is said that from sound, the ether becomes manifested and that the air becomes manifested for ether. How the ethereal sky comes from sound, how the air comes from sky and how fire comes from air will be explained later on. Sound is the cause of the sky and sky is the cause of srotum, the ear. The ear is the first sense of receiving knowledge. One must give oral reception to any knowledge one wants to receive, either material or spiritual. Therefore, shrotam is very important. The very knowledge is called shruti. Knowledge has to be received by hearing. By hearing only can we have access to material, either material or spiritual enjoyment. In the material world, we manufacture many things from is our that, material complex simply I, by what? hearing. They are already there, but just by hearing, one can transform them. If we want to build a very high skyscraper, whoops, what happened? We lost. You have to bring the uh, verse back. Mm -hmm.
if we want to build a very high skyscraper, that doesn't mean that we have to create it. The materials for the size skyscraper, wood, metal, earth, etc., are already there. But we make our intimate relationship with those already created material elements by hearing how to utilize them. Modern economic advancement for creation is also a product of hearing. And similarly, one can create a favorable field of spiritual activities by hearing from the right source. Arjun was a gross materialist in the bodily conception of life. He was suffering from the bodily conception very acutely. By simply, by hearing, Arjuna became a spiritualized Krishna conscious person. Hearing is very important and that hearing is produced from the sky. By hearing only can we make proper use of that which already exists. This principle of hearing to properly use preconceived materials is applicable to spiritual paraphernalia as well. We must hear from the proper spiritual source. This verses were quite scientific in this explanation of how creation unfolds and how the, in, the ingredients within the creation come together in different forms simply by the principle of sound. Sound is the, the original principle of existence. That sound is uh, omkara, A-U-M, om, A stands for Krishna, represents Krishna. U represents Radharani and M represents all living beings. So in Om, the entire existence of material, spiritual existence is there and material also, A-U-M, Om. From that, it unfolds and it manifests itself in different forms of itself as, it, as the creation unfolds. The Lord glances over the Pradhan. Pradhan means the aggregate of all the spiritual substances or material substances in a dormant stage. Aggregate means they're all together, they're not separated. Um, it's explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam that the Lord glances. So when it says here, ignorance agitated by the sex energy, the sex energy of the Lord is his glance upon material energy. And that glance is uh, carried by his internal potency, uh, Rama Devi, who is a manifestation of Lakshmi Devi for the sake of creation. She's called Rama Devi in that particular context. And then creation starts to exist. Krishna creates the basic elements, bhumi rapana loba yukamana bilbudi evacha, ahankar iti yame bina prakriti astada, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego make up the, the separated material energies. So prior to the actual manifestation of creation, they exist in an aggregate form. This is where we understand that Krishna is the source of creation. And then when the Lord glances over those uh, aggregates, it's called Pradhan. Pradhan has a shape like an egg. And in that egg shape, there is everything material, but unmoved, or not moving. It's just there, it's dormant. Just like you can actually compare it to procreation in this world. When the man comes in contact with the woman, the man gives the seed, the woman gives the body. The womb of the woman is agitated by the, uh, by the sex energy of the man, which carries the energy of existence in it, and that is called the soul. And when the soul enters into the womb, then the woman, the, the, the mother supplies the body, the father supplies the life. And together that comes into a form 
in a very small sense called a P. We exist in a very P-like shape when we first are produced. And then in the mother's body within the ninth month period being nourished by the mother, we grow into a baby. And then after nine months, we appear in the manifested material existence. So if you use, if you understand that, how creation works in the material sense, you can also understand the same principle is there in the higher sense, which is the source. So when Krishna glances over material energy carried by his internal energy, Ramadari Devi, and in that glance, there is Shiva and there is time and there is the living entities. So that glance contains three elements, time, the time factor. So the time factor enters into the material energy and becomes a part of the material energy, which moves the material energy from one stage to another. And Shiva is there. He is also known as the father of all living entities. And this is the Sada Shiva, the original Shiva. And you also have the living entities that are also there. So we are placed in the in combination with the material energy. And then when everything starts moving around, the Lord expands himself into himself, into another manifestation of himself known as Garbhodaksai Vishnu. From Garbhodaksai Vishnu sprouts from his navel a lotus flower, a gigantic lotus flower. And from that lotus flower comes the first created being, and that is Lord Brahma. He appears from the lotus and comes out of the lotus. And when he comes out, he looks around and he can't see anything. It's completely dark. There's nothing. Finally, the Lord produces a sound, and that sound is tapa. Tapa. The Lord speaks it twice. Tapa. And which means austerity. Brahma gets the message, goes back down to the lotus and starts to meditate on the sound vibration tapa within his heart. And through that meditation, the Lord appears and directs Lord Brahma how to take the aggregate material energy, which is now in motion, and to bring it together into the different forms, 8,400,000 species of life, Lord Brahma produces that by producing what is called progeny or sons. These are the 10 sons of Brahma, which appear, and they are progenitors, and they are meant to bring about the manifestation of the next creation according to the karma of the living entities at the time when the previous manifestation of creation was annihilated. During that annihilate, after that annihilation period, they enter into the body of Mahavishnu and stay there in an interim period for many billions of years until the Lord again manifests the, the time period. And again, the living entities again come back and leave and take up where they left off in the previous sojourn in the material world. And then creation starts again. And then according to karma, the living entities enter into a particular type of body and we get a particular type of body. Accordingly, 8,400,000 species of life, 400,000 are human forms, the other 8 million are various forms below the human, such as aquatics, birds, creepers, plants, insects, fish, aquatics, and uh, beasts, four-legged animals. So you can see the human beings. So then, um, sound being the initial principle that unfolds and manifests the creation. Everything is done by sound. So you see Prabhupada is making this point here and this exists that all the ingredients for both spiritual and material development already manifest. But unless we get the sound vibration or that knowledge that comes by way of how to utilize these ingredients 
we remain in ignorance. And so on the spiritual level, that sound is manifested. It's called Sabda Brahman. Sabda means sound and Brahman means spiritual. So the Vedas are called Shruti, that which is heard. So that Sabda Brahman manifests itself in the form of the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which manifests from Lord Brahma himself. He also is the source of bringing the Vedas into the world. The Vedas are not man-made, like many scriptures we have in the world today. They were man-made. That was brought out in a discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Chanakasi. What Chanakasi was saying, well, you know, your scriptures are man-made, therefore they're full of faults. But, but transcendental scriptures, that which comes by way of the Vedas, is perfect. Because it is a parushad. A parushad means not made by any material person. In other words, it's coming from the Lord himself. And so that sound vibration in the form of the words of the Vedas, which actually begins with the sound of the Vedas, Taini Brahma Haida Adhika within the heart of all living entities, I'm sorry, within the heart of Lord Brahma, Krishna speaks this knowledge. So when we understand all knowledge comes by way of sound, then we take the ingredients given to us by the by the manifestation of the energies of spirit and we formulate them into devotional activities and that is bhakti yoga so the uh, the manifestation of krishna in the spiritual sense comes in two forms of himself the impersonal and the personal just like everyone is a person but everyone has energy also so the energy is the things we, we do and the things we, we possess. That is our energy. So you might say we, we have a computer. So we use the computer to do things. So we're using, we're, we're, we're working through our energies, which come in the form of material things. Because they're, in, they're being used to us, they're an extension of our nature, or when you say our existence. So in the, in the sense of you, you sing, we hear from Krishna, from the pure devotee spiritual master and from the great souls who are known as acharyas in the past. And based on that hearing, we can practice spiritual life. We know what to do and we also know how to do it. And we also know what mood we should perform it in. So knowledge comes by hearing. Everything is there in sound. And sound is the original cause of creation. And Prabhupada also says sound is also used for destruction also. We understand through Vedic literature that when it's time for destruction, the Lord, the Lord manifests himself as Lord Shiva and performs what is called pralaya. Pralaya means Pralaya simply means destruction. But then there is a particular way that Lord Shiva destroys the creation. And that is through his Tandava. Tandava is a particular dance that he performs. And in that dance, it destroys the entire creation. So you see everything, and he, and he beats on a particular drum while he's dancing. And that drum is called the dindin drum. And it makes a particular sound to produce uh, the element that winds up the creation. So you see, everything in creation comes from sound. When we want something to manifest, sound is the source. And we want to destroy something, Sound is the by way, is the means by which destruction comes. So how important is sound? So when it comes down to our spiritual practice, the more we develop the quality of hearing, 
And this quality of hearing is not simply receptivity of a sound. It is to go deep into the mood of the sound and the sound vibration itself. Because sound is so utilitarian in the sense that when we go deep into spiritual sound, it awakens within us realization of what we are hearing and at the same time, it purifies our consciousness from the material to the spiritual. It cuts away from, it cuts away all of the manifestations of material coverings, which are covering the soul. Sound is very powerful. That's why we say chant Hare Krishna. But the more we chant and the more quality that that chanting develops with, the more the effect of purifying the soul's existence, such as getting rid of the misconceptions of our existence. Sound teaches us we are not this body. Sound teaches us we are eternal parts and parcel of the supreme soul. Sound teaches us that we have a we have an re eternal relationship with the Lord in devotion. So all knowledge comes from sound. Whether you read it or you hear it, it's still sound. The sound that comes from the words of the of the Vedas uh, or the words of the great scriptures such as Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, uh, the Upanishads, and Chaitanya Charitam. That these are powerful sound vibrations. That's why we would recommend that when devotees read, they also chant the Sanskrit or the Bengali, because that chanting of these sounds and when it's done in the proper meter is very purifying. It's a spiritual sound vibration. Spiritual sound vibration awakens devotion, whereas material sound vibration covers our consciousness in a mundane sense and gives us some understanding of how to manipulate the material energy in order to somehow or other access some type of control in that material energy. But that's the best we get from the material sense. But still, we have to come back to the principle that's being given here, that sound is the source of everything. So the more we chant Hare Krishna and the more we do it with absorption, uh, absorption is a synonymous with the word devotion because you cannot be devoted unless you are absorbed. <laughs> if you go through the motions of doing something without being absorbed, there is very little of any devotion there. It's activity, but not much devotion. So um, yeah, so understanding this verse, then you can understand how everything works. <laughs> and there is another verse that's coming up in I think a few verses coming up that is, Prabhupada said, if you understand this verse, it is the basis of all scientific development. If scientists understand this verse, they can understand how everything works within the creation. The sound is very powerful, <laughs> extremely powerful. And one can, as this is here, liberation by sound, like that. So sometimes we recommend that when you chant Hare Krishna, you not only chant the holy names by hearing, but you can also visualize the name within your mind. And that is another form of uh, meditation on the holy name which adds to the quality of that chanting of course that's that takes practice and doesn't come you know right away but if one can practice chanting and visualizing the holy name while you chant this is this is a higher stage of chanting and it's uh, it's recommended there is a technical name for that which I'll explain in another class because I would have to do a little research to find that. 
but it's uh, very, very effective. So everything is based on sound. And we see when sound is unpleasant, we want to, we feel unhappy or we feel disturbed. Just like when you hear the sounds of construction going on around you, when the jackhammers are digging into the road, it's a very annoying sound. And you can see that people who have that kind of occupation who was around that sound all day, they actually become mentally disturbed because sound will formulate, the sound will destroy. Unpleasant sound will causes us. And it's interesting to know that we can take this, this principle on different levels that different kinds of music have a particular sound vibration that works on different levels of the body. Those, those different levels are called chakras. In the body, there are, I think, eight chakras or seven chakras. And they start with the, the base chakra, which is at the base of the spine, and gradually goes up the heart chakra, and then the throat and then the top of the head. So the heart chakra, it is mentioned and scientifically proved that when you chant Vedic hymns coming from the Vedas in the meters that they are given, it works directly on the heart chakra. It opens up the heart and the heart becomes, when we say the heart, we mean that place where the seat of emotions are located, it opens up our emotions and we start feeling affection, we start feeling happy, we feel start feeling everything positive comes. And when it's directed at Krishna, then we start feeling a, a loving expression towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If you do rock and roll, <laughs> It works on the lower chakras and the sex energy is agitated and people actually become mad. Sometimes you can you know, see or you hear about that people who go to rock and roll concerts, they actually become crazy by that sound vibration because it's the opposite of the rhythm of the body. It's completely the opposite. It pulls the energy down into the lower chakras where lust is agitated even more and more and more. And then if you go to other types of sound, depending on the quality and expression of that sound, it works on a different chakra within the body. And according to that uh, effect, you get a certain type of consciousness. So that's why the uh, Vedic bhajans, which glorify the Supreme Lord, are not only glorification of the Lord, but they bring the whole being of the living entity into that consciousness or into that experience. And then that's why one feels happy, one feels devotional. <coughs> you know, it's all based on sound. So um, what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn that we should always be in that in connection of that sound that elevates our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And try to avoid as much as possible sound vibration that takes you into the material. Um, and there's a lot of that too. There is a lot of that around us. That's what how the material world goes on. And just to add that same point that we mentioned earlier, that even in the material world, if you want to create something, you have to hear about the science of creating that. And then the elements are already produced. All you have to do is apply the knowledge that comes by hearing into those objects and formulate the various types of material, uh, material things that we use. So everything comes from sound. And sky, it's mentioned here that sky, ethereal sky, sound comes from the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing is manifested. And then the first 
the first uh, manifestation of that is the ear is produced or the ear is activated. And then you have sound, you have hearing, and then you have ear, three things. And that's from the element of ether. And this, radio waves work on that same thing. When uh, the radio was created, it was understood that producing various sounds and learning how to put them into the atmosphere and connecting them to another apparatus on another level, on another area, that sound travels through ether. So ether is the conductor for sound. Okay, these are very scientific, but the actual basis is that stay in connection with spiritual sound vibration and you'll always be, uh, you might say, your consciousness will always be uplifted. Material sound means you go the other way, down into the bodily conception of life, into the mood of unhappiness or even suffering. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the very nice class on spiritual sound vibration. Thank you so much. Um, devotees, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, please go ahead. We can add one thing like speech. Speech should be, it says that one should speak um, truthfully, beneficially, and avoid speech that offends. This is the austerity of speech. When speech is done pleasingly, and that is the expression of speech is pleasing, even though the words may be very difficult to accept, they become easier to accept or there is more transmission of that sound when the words are given pleasantly. So what does that mean? One should learn the art of how to speak in such a way that is pleasing. Mm -hmm. like that. And that's an art. Mm -hmm. We have to practice that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Uh, this was a a very technical session, but I think it uh, it's so important. Uh, you can use this in preaching to scientific and intellectuals of how sound is powerful and how sound is important and how everything begins from sound and hearing. So this has helped, actually. Yeah, the verse in this particular series of verses is number 34. That's the one that really takes you into the whole realm of scientific investigation. If you want to read that verse, just for the sake of bringing it up, it's interesting. Bring up number 34. Yes, good manager. It's interesting. That's 32, 33, 34, okay. The activities and characteristics of the ethereal element can be observed as the accommodation of room for the external and internal existence of all living entities, namely the field of activities of the vital air, the senses, and the mind. Hmm.
go down the page and I'll just read something that Prabhupada says here. Uh, let's see. Here, it says here, this verse is the potential basis of great scientific research work, for it explains how subtle forms are generated from the ethereal element, what their characteristics and actions are, and how the tangible elements, fire, air, air, fire, air, water, are manifested from the subtle forms. Mental activities or psychological actions of thinking, feeling, willing, are also activities on the platform of ethereal existence. So Prabhupada makes that point. It's very hard to understand this verse. You have to read it over and over again and try to understand it in context with the, with the whole series of verses. But Prabhupada says that this verse is the potential basis of great scientific research work. Yes, Mahaj. Thank you. I'm not going to try to give. I'm not going to try to give a scientific analysis of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Maharaj. But because uh, when I was reading uh, Canto three, I was reading it uh, because I didn't want to skip to Canto four or the chapters, but it was challenging, and then I had to go back again and read it, and still, it didn't make sense. So I think yes, it, the technical we have to read it many times. <laughs> Yeah, that's how you start to break through. Anyone else? Sridhami Mataji, uh, you can go ahead, Mataji. Thank you, Lavani. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you again for reminding us about the importance of hearing, especially the sound vibration of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I wanted to share a study being done by Prabhupada Research Institute, where three groups of people are being taught different um, mantras. And already the leader of the group is reporting that the group which is hearing the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is reporting better thinking abilities, more calmness, their heart rates are going down, their stress levels are going down, their um, fear, uh, especially in this COVID and everything is going down. So it's completely new people who don't know anything about the Maha Mantra, they are reporting positive benefits simply by hearing the sound vibration of the Maha Mantra. I just uh, humbly want to share that. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a we can use it for you know, getting people to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. He's actually making a very ambitious plan that this becomes a prescription. He's a doctor himself. And he says, if so many things, you know, meditation workshops and going for retreats, this, that, we should be able to say doctors can write this as a prescription medicine to combat heart disease, anxiety, mental illness, and so on. Mm -hmm. Very ambitious yeah. plan. Yeah. If you're having any problems, Jan Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not having any problems, Jan Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. The pure sound vibration, but it's Krishna in the form of sound. <laughs> Thank you. That was interesting. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Um, like, um, usually um, people or uh, devotees or people or general people are uh, inclined towards more of music. Uh, like when we come to Krishna conscious also, we are very much attracted to the Kirtans. Uh, so, but uh, I always wonder, like, are we attached to the tunes of the Kirtan or the actual Mahamantra or which gives us the satisfaction of uh, hearing um, uh, Guru Maharaj. We should be more or less focusing on the sound of the holy name. There are those who drift away from that and more or less qualify the quality of the chanting based on the melodies. 
But Prabhupada has shown us, and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasmati also especially has shown us, that the melodies are simply adjuncts. They are uh, ways to make the expression. And they also have moods. They create moods also. There's melodies in the mood of separation from Krishna. There's melodies in the mood of meeting Krishna. There's a melodies in the mood of moving from separation to meeting Krishna. All of these are expressed by the certain moods. And the same chanting is there. It's all the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So if you want to give a little understanding of the, the difference, if you have a bunch of zeros, you know, you could have a hundred zeros and you have zero. But if you put a one in the beginning, then every zero that you add on to it multiplies the number by 10. So similarly, that one is the holy name or the, or the name itself. The zeros are the expressions that we give to the holy name. Right. So when the expressions are in line with the proper melodies and are done with devotion, then that one is the experience of that one is even more direct or more quicker, you might say. But if you compare the, each one in, to each other, you'll find that it's not about the melody, it's about the name. Uh, example, Srila Prabhupada was in Vrindavan and the devotees had met one very expert bhajan singer in Vrindavan. So he was inclined. He wanted to come and meet Prabhupada. So they brought him. And Prabhupada was doing a little kirtan. They, got, they arrived at around that time. And I think it was part of a, a bigger program. And so the devotees were glorifying this bhajan singer. And so they asked Prabhupada if he could sing. And Prabhupada said, sure, let him sing. So he started to sing. And of course, the expression was very nice, but his mood was not devotional. His mood was more like, you know, I'm such a good singer. And he was more about, it was more about him singing than it was about devotion. So Prabhupada could understand that. So he stopped him. And then he turned to one devotee there who couldn't sing at all, who wasn't a good singer, and asked him to sing. And so the devotee was, you know, he was embarrassed, but Prabhupada had asked him, so he, he tried. And the devotees were wondering what Prabhupada was doing, because this boy really couldn't sing at all. <laughs> but Prabhupada was, was, with his eyes closed, he was just moving his head back and forth. Because the boy, although he couldn't, he didn't have the, melo the melody or even the, the rhythm at all, he, um, he was singing with devotion. And that's what Prabhupada was accepting. So Prabhupada showed us, you know. But when you add both together, it's wonderful. So you see where the importance lies, it lies in the devotion. And not so much in the melody. Yes, good Maharaj. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of the devotion of the Kirtaniyas, uh, we are so much attracted and uh, we also feel good uh, after hearing that Kirtan. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was known as one who could not sing. <laughs> <laughs> but he, when he would sing, you know, it was something wonderful. <laughs> because he was singing with bhakti. I know I can name, I won't name, I won't name, but I can name, there are kirtan singers today who can't sing, but they have a lot of devotion. And because of that, nobody can recognize the fact that they can't sing. <laughs> I guess, you know, <laughs> Because when you see, when the devotion takes you, you immediately accept whatever is coming as being wonderful. So it's all about the devotion.
Yeah, I think I should also get into that platform, um, to that platform where I can appreciate the devotion first and later the expressions or the tunes or moods. Uh, we like both. If you when you put both together, as I use that analogy, it's the one with the zeros. Mm. The zeros just increase the the quality of the one, or bring it out even more. That's the point. So when you got both together, then immediately you go up. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada, in bringing Kirtan into the Western world, he wanted devotees to learn the melodies. Why? Because he knew the Western people will be more inclined to listen and take interest. For Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati wasn't. He didn't put any emphasis on the melodies. He put emphasis on the devotion. But Prabhupada knew when dealing with Westerners, you'd have to have nice expression. So for preaching, we use, we try to do both, you know. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. And uh, Guru Maharaj, I have one more question. Um, so based on this hearing, um, we we always select um, uh, to hear to certain uh, speakers or particular speakers classes only. But um, I heard in one lecture that uh, um, if you do like that, that is also an offense uh, towards that Vaishnava, uh, like uh, the other Vaishnavas. Uh, so so how to um, develop that? Like we have to give the importance to Krishna Katha, not to the speaker who is speaking that um well it's just natural that we have our favorite kirtan ears we have our favorite speakers because each of us connects with different people on different on on a level that we, that is most connected to our nature or our, our likings just like when you try to get well, here i'll give you an example marriage <laughs> So marriage, the when you in Vedic thing they say in order to maximize the quality of the marriage, you judge the nature and likings of the boy and girl. So when nature and likings are in line, it's a good chance that marriage will be very good. But if the nature and the likings are not there and people get married, it doesn't mean that marriage is not going to work. It's just got to, you just got to work harder. That's all <laughs> to make it work. You see the, you see the connection between. Yeah. So yeah, we have our favorites, but when we don't have that uh, attraction, still the Holy name is there. And if we focus on that, we can get beyond all the externals. That's good. Yeah. That's true. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Um, Guru Maharaj Sriji Sri Sundari Mataji is asking, um, Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandavats all rise to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, how to develop focus and taste in chanting the holy name? By, by carefully listening. It will work as you apply the principle of hearing. That hearing takes you into the deeper into the mantra and allows you to develop that taste. Just force yourself to hear. And I use that word force because the mind likes to wander. Force yourself to stay connected to that sound vibration. Sometimes in kirtan programs, what we tell the devotees, if you're not hearing right, just close your eyes and listen. Mm -hmm. Closing your eyes helps you set, shut out any external distractions and, for, and helps you to concentrate on what you're hearing. That's true with japa also. You want to improve your japa, close your eyes and just listen. Mm. 
devotees, any more questions? Listen to the mantra. Force yourself to listen. Sri Devi Mataji, you have uh, raised your hand. Yeah, if you don't mind, can I go ahead and ask another yes. question? Yes, Mataji. Um, uh, Guru Maharaj, if you don't mind, would you please tell us the importance of correct pronunciation when we are chanting the verses in the scriptures, when we are chanting the holy names, when we are reading the holy texts? How important it is for us to, even Guru Pranam, I've heard so much, you know, butchering of even Srila Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. I was wondering if you could speak a little and guide us about that. Um, Mother Lavanya. Yes, good Maharaj. Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Adi Lila, chapter 17. Verse 32. Yes, good message. Okay, go down the page. Uh, go ahead, Sri Devi, read. Um, raising my hands, I declare, everyone, please hear me. String this verse on the thread of the holy name and wear it on your neck for continuous remembrance. So he's talking about the verse, Trinata Peace, Sunichena, Tayori Vasahishnana. Uh, humble, tolerant, prideless, giving respects to others. But here, Going to Prabhupada's purport is the answer to your question. Purport. When chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, in the beginning, one may commit many offenses, which are called Namabhas and Nam Aparad. In this state, there is no possibility of achieving perfect love of Krishna by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Therefore, one must chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra according to the principles of the above verse. Trinad api suni chena taro riva sahishnuna. One should note in this connection that chanting involves the activities of the upper and lower lips as well as the tongue. All three must be engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. The words Hare Krishna should be very distinctly pronounced and heard. Sometimes one mechanically produces a hissing sound instead of chanting with the proper pronunciation with the help of the lips and tongue. Chanting is very simple, but one must practice it seriously. Therefore, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, advises everyone to keep this verse always strung about his neck. Okay, so Prabhupada talks about renunciation in this purport here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clearly pronounced the sound, avoiding the hissing sound. Now, when you're listening, it becomes natural to chant clearly. If you're not listening, you may also think you're chanting clearly, but you're, you may not be. So I would add that point very carefully here. But Prabhupada says it should be distinctly pronounced and heard. That's the key in there using the lips and the tongue. You have to produce a sound, silent chanting. Sometimes devotees get into this silent chanting. It's not recommended. You have to make an audible sound. Even if it's soft, it has to be audible. 
Does that help? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. I think it's uh, very important to focus on, on uh, hearing after pronouncing very clearly. They both go hand in hand. So one must make efforts to avoid um, inattentive chanting by following this uh, instruction, which is... What I, what I find, and Prabhupada also mentions it in other places, when you begin, you start off very clearly and slowly. And you stay like that until you actually pick up the connection with the sound. So you start Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And continue with a very clear and, you know, methodological, keep a meter. Try to develop a particular meter in your chanting and then gradually increase the speed within that same meter. Yes, Guru Mahat. Thank you so much. Yeah, don't be in a hurry to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guru Mahat. Beat the club, Chapa. <laughs> That's really one of my yeah. challenges. Yeah, you get your rounds done, but that's all. Right. Nothing, nothing right. much changed. <laughs> oh, Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. This is so important. It's the most important activity of the day. And so that's why I'm really wanting to get out of this inattentive chanting, get out of this mentality of, I have to finish it. I have to finish it and get on to other things. And, you know, this mentality actually prevents good japa. A good way to get out of that is get away from everything that you are familiar with and go some other place and chant. You know? When you start chanting in the areas where you are doing your day-to-day -day activities, your mind sometimes goes to these objects and you start thinking about them, how to use them, what to do. So it's recommended that you have a place that is free from that. If you stay in your same area, go into a room that is free from that. If you're not, otherwise, sometimes just get out of that area. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Sacred space. Um, devotees, any more questions? I think, Guru Maharaj, there are no more questions now. Um, okay. So I just want to mention that tomorrow I'll be at a particular temple in South London, and we will be doing a program from 4 o'clock UK time to 6 o'clock UK time. So we're going to live stream the things so you can also, the devotees can come on as a regular part of the program so you'll be able to take part by watching the i'll be there'll be a lecture and there'll also be care time so so uh guru maharaj whom should i contact uh, for the live streaming guru maharaj um you should connect with um uh, vindavan nath yes guru. okay and he can give you everything yeah. yes guru maharaj. sure Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Maharaj. It is Srinivas Prabhu's birthday today. Really? Yes, Guru Maharaj. He was here until now. One second, Guru Maharaj. I think he disappeared. You just had your son's birthday a couple of days. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> Both. Uh, did your husband, did yeah. your husband plan it like this? <laughs> <laughs> One second, he came. Guru Maharaj. Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept number of essences. Always to Shila Prabhupada. Can I ask you a very provo provocative question? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. When you were deciding to have children, were you trying to have one on your same birthday? 
actually i i was i was hoping guru maharaj when when they when they told like you know uh, on the day of uh, conceiving they said that okay the due date will be 4th august i was insisting that no anyway going to come two days late so he will be on 6th but <laughs> 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 that didn't happen and uh, uh, he came on 4th but uh, the surprising thing is all the nurses in that day said okay this is something very unique because most of the kids will come early or late but not on the exact date it was told so he came on his exact date well, i can say you're acting pretty good thank <laughs> you man you are you you must be an expert plan maker <laughs> with the help of your wife of course thank you very much Yes, he has he has anyway th- th- thank you very much congratulations on your birthday Srinivas <laughs> <laughs>